G'day Earthlings, Dr. Rank here, and welcome back to Gaming Legends, the show that wants to fly high so I can reach the highest of all the heavens. Previously, we managed to finish Sonic's campaign in Sonic Adventure without utilizing the ever-so-important Z-axis. And while that was certainly a challenge in its own right, the natural next step was obvious. Can everyone beat Sonic Adventure without pressing up or down? This video will be continuing where we left off in our previous save file with the ultimate goal of finishing every single character's story campaign. As a reminder, we're playing the Steam port of Sonic Adventure DX with up and down inputs mapped to a separate joystick from left and right inputs. We'll also be leaving the camera in auto mode for the majority of the playthrough, only using free camera mode when absolutely necessary. And for obvious reasons, cheat codes and external mods are banned. Without further ado, let the adventure continue. I'll be covering each campaign in the order I played them, starting with the mascot of no D-pad runs, Knuckles the Echidna. Compared to Sonic's story, Knuckles has some fairly significant differences. He can't do a spin dash or homing attack, but he can glide forwards in the direction he's facing. And unlike the 2D Sonic games with a laundry list of latte locks, Knuckles can still perform a glide after being launched via spring. If you need a little more precision, you can also move slightly forward with a 3 hit punch combo. Gliding into a wall will cause you to grab onto it, from which you can either jump off to turn around, or shimmy sideways along it. This movement operates independently of the camera, meaning your altitude is fixed while shimmying. Climbing walls explicitly requires you to press up, but there's a way around this. Just turn the camera perpendicular to the wall and repeatedly jump while moving towards it to gradually climb higher and higher until you reach the top. The levels themselves are also structured differently, tasking you with collecting three Master Emerald Shards in an open sandbox. The locations of these shards are randomized when the level first loads, but unlike Adventure 2, dying does not cause them to reset. If you're not happy with where the emeralds are, you'll have to exit the level completely. Though for my playthrough, I tried my best to collect the shards I was given the first time around. The hardest part of Speed Highway was physically locating the shards, but even that's not saying much. Our next stop is Cassinopolis, and no, there isn't an official pronunciation, not even in that one cutscene from Sonic Heroes. In order to reach the button to open the casino doors, we need to glide from this slope. Slopes are much harder and more tedious to climb than a vertical surface, and even when you get up there, the camera has to be lined up perfectly to reach the button. Once you get inside, the stage itself is extremely simple. After a brief flashback, we follow Eggman to the penthouse to fight Chaos 2. Boss fights are much harder as Knuckles than as Sonic. Not only does the camera always point at the boss, but Knuckles doesn't have a homing attack. Luckily, the unsung hero programmer at Sonic Team made gliding into the wall of a boss arena cause Knuckles to partially turn around. And just like with Sonic, we can make minor adjustments to our gliding angle with slight horizontal inputs in mid-air. Four glides into Chaos's ugly mug is all we need to stave him off. After teleporting to Mystic Ruins, we obtain the Shovel Claw, allowing us to find buried items like the self-destruct button. We can't glide or punch while holding items, meaning we need to carry them on foot, which largely consists of zigzagging back and forth in narrow tunnels. This also lets us into Red Mountain, which, despite its vertical focus, is still easy. The Sonic fight was more challenging since Sonic tends to favor aerial attacks, making punches less effective. Your best bet is to wait for him to use a homing attack, then punch twice to get a hit in. Chaos 4 is just as tedious as in Sonic's campaign, but the quicksand like water isn't as big an issue with Knuckles. We can keep facing towards him by steering our glides, and when that doesn't work, gliding to the edge of the arena to turn the camera is still a valid strategy. Our next destination is Lost World, but first we need to open it. This requires us to carry the gold and silver statues to the entrance, which is more tedious than anything. It didn't help that I couldn't remember where the silver statue actually was though. While we're here, I decided to grab Knuckles' fighting gloves, which unlocks the maximum heat Knuckles attack. 
This move works like Sonic's light speed attack, and it will prove useful in about 40 minutes. Lost World itself has a lot of verticality, and the wall running panels aren't climbable, making traversals slightly more difficult. Slightly. In the subsequent flashback, I encountered a mystery. When I glided into the stairs to the Master Emerald Shrine, I somehow got turned around. This doesn't happen with any other staircase in the entire game. I guess the unsung programmer at Sonic Team was in charge of this place. After depositing the Emerald Shards we've already collected, we follow Gamma to the Egg Carrier. Knuckles' entrance to Skydeck is in a room with a fixed camera, but this can easily be fixed by gliding in from the pool. The gimmick with this level is gravity manipulation, with certain shard locations only accessible at specific angles. Moving the lever is a bit cumbersome since the joystick has to be moving in the exact correct direction, but it is doable. The first two shards I got were both in the lower doors near the start of the level. Once you get into these spaces though, the camera is fixed and the walls unclimbable. It's impossible to get out of there alive. However, it is possible to get out of there by getting killed by the nearby cannons, which keeps your collected shards. Shard 3, meanwhile, spawned at the very top of the level, which is almost impossible to reach unless the floor is perfectly level. Climbing up the tilted walls to reach the lever was no easy feat, but I assure you it is 100% possible. After one final flashback, we get to the final boss of Knuckles' campaign, Chaos 6, which also happens to be the hardest boss in Knuckles' campaign. Just like with Sonic, we need to freeze him with the ice bombs before we can attack, but hitting them is much harder than it looks. I recommend using a maximum heat Knuckles on one, letting Chaos inhale it, then quickly using a second one on Chaos himself. This will take out half his health bar, meaning you only have to repeat the process one more time. You'll want to glide around the edge of the arena to keep your rings up, and watch out for the exposed engine. Also, be aware that if Chaos inhales Knuckles, he won't get a chance to inhale anything else. On my successful attempt, I somehow managed to send an ice bomb directly into his ugly mug, leaving just one more Maximum Heat Knuckles to end this 3 minute, 3 game over battle for good. With the Master Emerald craggled back together, the Knuckles Adventure Press Up To Lose run is officially conquered. Of course, that was the easy part. The real challenge is the rest of the game. Both Sonic and Knuckles have multiple tools for forward movement. Everyone else gets absolutely nothing. Just look at our next subject, Miles Tails Prower. He can fly directly upwards, and he can do a spin attack. That's it! He can't even spin dash despite literally inventing the move. And while Tails can do a roll to preserve his momentum, he needs to build that momentum in the first place. Tails' run is entirely at the mercy of the camera, which isn't very merciful in the hub world. We can safely zigzag our way to the jet anklet upgrade, which lets Tails fly faster, but after that we need to catch the train. The entrance to the station has a fixed camera, and we can't enter the door no matter where we enter from. However, if we activate free camera mode for the first time in this run, we can move the camera freely in this area, letting us walk straight on through and then immediately turn it off again on the other side. Once we arrive in Mystic Ruins, we have to fight the Egg Hornets again, but this time without any method of forward movement. As I mentioned earlier, bosses are total camera hogs, limiting our movements to a single axis, and Tails doesn't have a homing attack of any kind. But remember, the Egg Hornet has a homing attack of its own, which Tails can dodge simply by flying over it. And the flying animation is also a damaging hitbox, letting us strike back at the same time. After depositing the Windstone again, we can enter the first proper Tails level, Windy Valley. The main gimmick with Tails' stages is that they're a race against Sonic, and while he is polite enough to slow down for you at certain points, he won't wait forever. 
fortunately tells his flight allows him to bypass entire sections of the level and dash rings can be used for automatic propulsion. The few obstacles that are shared with Sonic's version of the level, such as the wind bridges, are dealt with in much the same way. Our next stop is the Station Square Hotel, whose entrance is, once again, guarded by the camera. This time though, I was able to get a running start with a roll and stop just in front of the door as it opened, letting me get in just by holding left. The door to the casino area also gave me some trouble, but nothing a little zigzagging couldn't fix. The button is much easier to reach with Tails, letting us enter Casino Police. Unfortunately, since Tails is only 8 years old, he's not allowed to enter the casino proper. This means we have to find the Chaos Emerald somewhere in the sewers. After doing some reverse skydiving, the intended path sends us down a narrow air duct where the camera is completely fixed. We can use a combination of slope abuse and zigzagging to make at least some progress, but we move so slowly that we can't make it out the other end by the time Sonic finishes the race. And even if I wanted to use free camera mode here, it's not quite free enough. But all hope is not lost yet. The wall in the fan section lacks collision in one specific area, so if we walk through it at just the right angle, we can go out of bounds. Conveniently, the area with the goal is directly beneath us, letting us bypass the entire level. And if you're wondering why there's a capsule here instead of a Chaos Emerald, it's because I didn't record this level properly the first time. Our next stop is Ice Cap, where we can skip the ladder by just flying into the loading zone. The level itself consists entirely of snowboarding and is thus a freebie. The Knuckles fight is fairly simple, just dodge or damage boost through his attacks, then counter with a spin. But you all know who the real enemy is here. Like I've mentioned, Chaos 4 can only be damaged when he surfaces in a completely random location, and Tails only has a single axis to work with. So good luck actually chasing him down, but instead of going to him, you can let him come to you. If you can convince Chaos to attack the lily pad you're standing on right before he surfaces, he'll surface right beneath you, leaving him open for a tailspin. It's still going to be a tedious battle, but Chaos 4 has less health when fighting Tails, meaning you won't need to land as many hits. With a little patience and a little luck, you'll take him down in 11 and a half minutes. And here I thought we were looking at a half day, Juanita. Sky Chase Act 1 is identical to Sonic's version, so I was able to clear it by just spamming the fire button. I even managed to make myself a bowl of wheat bix while doing so. After crashing in the forest, we follow Froggy to the shortest and easiest level in the game. Green Hill's looking a lot more like Sand Hill right now. During the flashback, we pick up the Rhythm Badge, upgrading Tails into a Bandicoot. It does nothing for his mobility, but it's literally required for progression, and it looks cool. After beating Sky Chase Act 2 with my eyes closed, we get to finally play an actual level, Sky Deck. The first half of the level is easy, even giving us a dedicated side-scrolling section. The hallway to the second half is too narrow for the camera to cooperate, but there's a nearby dash pad we can use to subvert it. The second half requires a lot of mid-air movement, which makes maintaining the proper camera angle difficult, but not impossible. During the final stretch, I discovered that Tails is an absolute god at climbing ladders. One more side-scroller, and we reach the capsule. E-102 Gamma was the hardest boss in Tails' run. Gamma prefers to attack from afar using projectiles, while Tails is strictly melee only. Not only that, but the laws of circular motion mean that every step we take inevitably sends us further away from him. This presents a problem. Fortunately, Tails gets knocked backwards whenever he takes damage, and he can still face towards the camera by using slight horizontal inputs in mid-air. So, putting these together, we can slowly approach Gamma and get close enough for a spin. The second hit has Gamma charging straight towards us, so it's free. But he goes back to the pot shot strat for the final hit, making it much harder to land. Eventually, I got lucky and got him to chase me, then stop right beside me. 
As soon as that fight's over, we're thrust into Tails' final level, Speed Highway. The camera in this stage is the least cooperative it's ever been, making frequent stops in the middle of the road and only freeing up if we fly up far enough which means that Speed Highway is all highway and no speed. Worse still, our opponent this time is Eggman who has no patience and travels as the crow flies. I have been able to make it as far as the first helipad, but by the time I get there, Eggman's already half done. Until a better strategy is found, the Tails Adventure Press Up To Lose run has officially failed. Next up is Amy Rose, who has even less to work with than Tails. Her best movement option is the hammer jump, which propels her upwards at high speed, but she can only use it when running at max speed. And in order to gain that speed in the first place, she has to walk. And even then, it's better at giving upwards momentum than forwards, which means she can't get into the hotel without free camera mode. Fortunately, we can get out into the casino area to meet Sonic by jumping in from the wall and running out the door, and use a similar tactic to exit the hotel afterwards. After entering Twinkle Park via cutscene, we find ourselves stuck in a fixed camera section. Thankfully, we can escape it by zigzagging back and forth from the sides, using jumps to preserve our trajectory. Once we reach the stairs, the camera frees up, making things much easier. We do technically have to worry about E100 Zero chasing us through the level, but the threat he actually poses is negligible. More zigzagging gets us into the haunted house, which is a cakewalk despite its linearity. Upon exiting Twinkle Park, the camera is fixed once again, but we can get out by simply hugging the left wall until it pans over. After Gamma busts us out of prison, we need to beat the high score in the Hedgehog Hammer minigame. Getting onto the platform is half the battle, because zigzagging works better for moving forwards than backwards. Eventually, I got a lucky jump onto the panel at the back, from which I could move left onto the platform. The minigame itself was very difficult, since I could only aim at half the targets, with only a split second to hit each one. But eventually, I got a lucky run with 2100 points, awarding me the Warrior Feather. This unlocks Amy's Spin Hammer attack, which, in addition to being completely useless, is completely useless. The attack requires you to rotate the joystick in a full circle, but since up and down inputs literally don't exist for me, the game interprets such a motion as... And forth and back and forth. The entrance to Hot Shelter has, say it with me, a fixed camera. And while we can zigzag up to the doorway, we can't enter the door itself. Once again, the free camera comes to our rescue. But not for long! The very first obstacle in Hot Shelter is a door. A door that will only open where the nearby crank is turned. And the only way to turn the crank is to make a circle with the joystick, which we literally just established is impossible. Luckily, it is possible to clip through the door with a very precise hammer flip, letting us proceed to the other side. Unluckily, another such door greets us shortly after, with more beyond it. The TAS of this level bypasses this section by getting a precise landing on Zero's head, forcing him to push Amy out of bounds. However, despite my choice of favourite character in this game, I am only human and have not been able to achieve this task. For the time being, the Amy Adventure Press Up To Lose run has officially failed. Next on the chopping block is Big The Cat, who is, somehow, even worse. No spin dash, no flight, no enhanced jumping power, and no importance to the plot. He's just big. But Dr. Rank, don't Big's levels have the least amount of platforming? All you do is fish for a frog, and while you can only aim the line along the horizontal axis, you can zigzag the crosshairs to send it further out to sea. Wow, you, you are absolutely correct, Cedric. Big's levels would be the easiest to play. If we could play one! We can get into the sewer, we can reach the lift in said sewer, we can open the door to Twinkle Park, but we can't actually enter it. 
The camera is fixed here, even in free camera mode, and neither of the walls are at the right angle to let us go forwards. This wasn't an issue with Sonic or Amy because they both enter this level through a cutscene, but Big has to walk through the door himself. The big adventure press up to lose run has failed. That just leaves us with one final character, my personal favourite E102 Gamma. Just like the others, Gamma can only move by walking, but he at least moves further forward when changing directions. Gamma's levels also have a 3 minute time limit, which can be extended by shooting enemies. The more hits you land at once, the bigger the time bonus. Final Egg has a few fixed camera sections we need to zigzag through, which is obviously going to make a significant dent in the timer, but the level is short enough that it's basically a non-factor. Boss fights in Gamma's campaign are generally the easiest since Gamma can just shoot them repeatedly, and E101 Beta is no different. After getting dropped off in Station Square, we need to use free camera mode once again to enter the hotel, but Emerald Coast can easily be entered with a little zigzagging. Emerald Coast itself has absolutely no camera restrictions whatsoever, though I did somehow manage to walk right past Froggy without realising. Hey, just because it's AI doesn't mean it's smart. One flashback and one traumatic eyewitness account later, we need to enter the prison on the egg carrier whose entrance has a fixed camera. We can easily zigzag our way into the door, but who knows what kind of foreshadowing this will have. After that, we can easily enter the ammunition room and obtain the jet booster, allowing Gamma to hover in the air, which should make platforming significantly easier. After brutally murdering Sonic, we need to grab the Windstone one last time. For Windy Valley, I recommend not shooting the enemies on the bridges, as doing so tends to collapse them. We do need to do a small amount of zigzagging in these corridors, but it's not nearly enough to drain the timer. Especially since the centipede enemies give you 40 seconds of time each when shot. The fight against E-103 Delta didn't go quite so well, since I initially landed too far forwards and couldn't lock on as easily. I got a much better angle on the second attempt though, meaning Windy Valley is gone with the wind. Then we get to Red Mountain. Remember the long camera locked hallways that Sonic had to deal with? Well now we have to do them again without the spin dash. I could make it surprisingly far by just pushing against the wall and dragging myself forwards, but remember we're on a time limit. So I looked to the speedrunners for advice and found a new strategy. If you don't shoot the rocks blocking the path at the start of the level, you can get a precise jump on top of them and go out of bounds, then hover all the way to the final room. Make sure you're facing the right way before initiating the fight with E104 Epsilon, lest you mess up and have to go out of bounds all over again. That just leaves one more level, Hot Shelter. As mentioned earlier, the entrance is camera locked and is difficult to enter with just zigzagging. Fortunately, Gamma is a zigzagging machine. Literally. If Gamma starts running at top speed, he'll transform into wheel mode, staying that way until he either jumps or enters a new area. Not only does Gamma move faster in wheel mode, but he also has a worse turning circle, meaning moving the joystick left and right makes him move forwards as he rotates. Actually entering wheel mode in the first place is a bit cumbersome though, since Gamma needs a long continuous stretch of flat ground to build up enough speed, but there's thankfully just enough space in the bridge to do just that. Hot Shelter is pretty much the only Gamma stage where the time limit actually matters in a casual playthrough, and doubly so in this run. Fortunately, whenever you die, the timer resets to its value at the time you trigger the checkpoint, and always leaves you with at least one minute. The section with the gears gave me a lot of trouble, especially this last jump to the ladder. So I instead decided to hover over to the spring, which proved much easier. The jump after this ramp was a little tight since I had to turn the camera 90 degrees, but the jet booster bought me enough time to make it first try. The train section cost me a few lives, but I was able to use the aforementioned checkpoint system to effectively boost my time. E105 Zeta is a slightly unique boss in that he has several individual weak points to shoot, 
but the moving floor means that you'll almost always be facing him anyway. With Zeta out of commission, we can take on Gamma's final boss. E101 Mark II doesn't just sit there waiting for you to shoot him. Instead, you'll have to dodge his own attack, then retaliate. Fortunately, damage boosting gives you the perfect angle to do so. And if that isn't an option, dodging to the right and then immediately facing left works just as well. After just 4 hits, the battle is over. With Gamma peacefully transforming into a bird with his dying not breath, the E-102 Adventure Press Up To Lose run is officially conquered! Now, I'm sure you're dying to know about the Supersonic story, but unlocking it requires you to finish the game as literally everyone. And since we've only finished half the campaigns, it's still off limits to us. And even if we could play it, I'm not too hopeful. It's a short story that mostly consists of traversing the overworld with Sonic, and that part is barely worth mentioning. But the boss fight against Perfect Chaos is another story. Unlike Vanilla Sonic, Super Sonic doesn't have a spin dash, meaning he has no grounded movement options. He can still do a homing attack though, and we can chain enough of them together to reach Chaos, but it does nothing. Perfect Chaos will only take damage if we approach him at maximum speed, which, given the direction of travel, doesn't exactly look feasible. The Supersonic Adventure Press Up To Lose run has officially failed. If you'd like to watch these runs, you can check out the archive footage via the link in the description. And if you want more Sonic content from me, I've also done a Tales Only run of SA2 you can check out. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss the next challenge run. That's all for now, and I will see you down under.